Assalamu alaikum everyone. Have you ever wondered what is inside of car engine? Like we know what car engines are, right? They're these things that are usually in the front of a car, maybe sometimes in the back of the car, depending on the car you're talking about. And it somehow makes the, helps the car move and it's an essential part to the car driving, its main function. Uh, but what is actually inside of a car engine and what's the physics behind it and how does it help the car actually move? To discuss all of these questions, we are, uh, we are going to be looking at how a car engine works. To, before we go uh, in depth to the mechanisms within a car engine, we have to discuss a few parts which are going to be essential in understanding the engines itself so this is a typical car engine i'm going to be using an inline four here as an example since it's pretty simple to visualize so these four things are called cylinders and these cylinders have these things called valves over them and these valves pump in fuel and air and they also take out any waste that's within the cylinder through the exhaust and in that cylinder, there's this thing called pistons. Now that piston is connected to this thing called a connecting rod. And that connecting rod is connected to this other rod that's perpendicular to all the cylinders. And it has all these little bearings. And this is called the crankshaft. And all of this is covered by an engine block and a cylinder head so these parts don't stay exposed within a car engine and this is then collect, uh, connected to a flywheel which is then connected to a transmission system and then it goes to the wheels so that is a lot of words to swallow so now we're going to be discussing the mechanism so that it's a lot easier to remember the names once you know their functions. So a typical um, combust internal combustion engine will use this thing called a four-stroke cycle, where there are, you guessed it, four strokes. And a stroke is basically when the uh, piston moves. So the first stroke is the intake. And the intake, when the piston is descending downward, so it's descending downward, it makes room for the cylinder to bring in air and to bring in fuel. So the air and fuel can mix. As the air and fuel are mixing, the piston is compressing the, the air-fuel mixture. And it does this because as you decrease the volume of a certain area the pressure within that area increases which thereby increases the temperature of the area which would make the particles move faster and so we have this pressurized air fuel mixture that's compressed in the compression stroke next we have the power so there's this electrical plug that's on the um, cylinder and this is, ignites a spark which ignites the air fuel mixture which causes combustion ergo the name internal combustion engine and what this does is basically it takes the oxygen and it takes the fuel and it converts them into co2 uh, a bunch of other things and most importantly a lot of heat energy this energy brings the piston back down now the piston is connected via connecting rod to the crankshaft. So as the piston is descending downward, the crankshaft rotates, thus completing four stroke, or thus completing the power stroke. Next we have the exhaust. So once the reaction is done and now we just have all this waste of carbon dioxide, what the piston does is that the piston goes back up so it pushes this now waste mixture out into the exhaust pipe, which is then pumped out of the car. Now, typically, a car won't have just one cylinder, but four cylinders, and thereby four pistons. So how does that work? How, does the piston, how do the pistons coordinate? Do all of them go out at once, or do they take turns? Well, they actually take turns in what is called a firing order. The firing order is basically what number piston will uh, 
ignite then the next then the next then the next so in this engine we have right here the firing order is one three four two this means that piston number one will be the first one that is ignited by the electrical spark then three then four then finally two but why in this jumbled order why not say go chronologically one two three four that seems a lot easier, doesn't it? We go piston one, piston two, piston three, piston four. Easy peasy. But that's not how it works. And let me explain to you why. See, here we have this diagram with all the piston, all the four cylinders and the crankshaft. And we have bearing A and bearing B on each side. And as a piston is descending downward, now according to Newton's third law of motion, an action will have an equal and opposite reaction. So when the piston is descending downward, it is, ex it is exerting a force on the crankshaft. And the crankshaft bearings are also exerting an inverse force upward. Now, if we look at this right here, we can see that bearing a is having to exert a lot more force than bearing b because its numerator is greater so if we will fire the second engine right after the first engine then it would cause too much load on bearing a rather than bearing b and there's also more to consider because if we ignite in uh, cylinder one and cylinder two that means that half the engine is very heated and the other half is relatively cooler so that will cause a bit of a disruption on the cooling systems as well because it's having to cool one side of the engine rather than the other so it's going to be a load on the cooling systems as well and lastly there is going to be a lot of pressure on the exhaust system because it won't have enough time to get rid of the air fuel mixture from one cylinder because another cylinder very close to it is also pumping it out which could cause further complications. So we've gone over the piston part. Now, how does, how does this translate to motion? Well, this is another more complicated part, and this is not a 30 minute video, but to summarize, basically the pistons, as they descend down, they rotate the crankshaft and one revolution, one full revolution of the crankshaft is denoted as R and the revolutions per minute is recorded as RPM. And so as the crankshaft rotates, it's, it's uh, attached to a flywheel, which is attached to a transmission system, which is a whole another different topic, which is going to require a different video. And that transmission system is then connected to the wheels, which makes the wheels move. So we got, um, we got linear motion from the pistons translated to rotational motion from the crankshaft, to rotational motion to the wheels and the wheels as they're rotating create linear motion for the car helping the car move so that last part took a lot of summarizing and it will require a few more videos to discuss them more in depth so if you are interested in that make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you're updated to what i upload and that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.